Paris Saint-Germain have a new manager, and you've probably never heard of him. Christophe Galtier has been a bit of a journeyman manager through France and in recent years has had a little bit of success. And obviously he's now at the very top table of French football with PSG. But he became famous for playing a 4-4-2 formation. And the question is, will PSG actually play in a 4-4-2? Before we get to the tactics, let's just talk a little bit about Christophe Galtier so you can familiarise yourself with his career. So on the board in front of me here, I've got his CV. The footballer in the 80s and 90s, plays in France, Italy, and interestingly is one of the first players to actually end their career in China. So there's a little bit of an interesting tidbit for you there. He then goes immediately into management. He's an assistant manager in all kinds of interesting places. He's got Greece here, Croatia here. He's in the Middle East as well. And then when we get to this section of his CV, he suddenly takes up a job as the assistant manager um, working for a guy called Alain Perrin. Again, works his way through, starts off in Portsmouth, but ends up moving into France and ends up at Saint-Étienne. And when he's there in Saint-Étienne, Alain Perrin is fired. They're in danger of going down in rele relegation trouble. And so Galtier is made the manager of Saint-Étienne then, and he actually saves them from relegation and spends eight seasons with the club. 2017 is an interesting period in French football because in 2017 Marcelo Bielsa is made the manager of Lille and then is very quickly made not the manager of Lille and the sporting director at Lille at the time is a guy called Luis Campos which is a name we need to remember but he brings in Christophe Galtier to save Lille from relegation and he manages that they have a 17th place finish and uh, from then on Lille just have real real success with Galtier. Now in 2022 the Football consultant who's doing a lot of the work for Paris Saint-Germain is Luis Campos. So you've got that connection then between Lille and Paris Saint-Germain. Obviously the two guys worked well together and that's why we are now seeing Galtier as the manager of Paris Saint-Germain. Those four seasons in Lille, really successful. A couple of Champions League finishes and in 2021, Galtier actually wins the league, Ligue 1 with Lille. After he wins the league, he moves on to Nice, but then only spends a season there and then he's moved on to Paris Saint-Germain, but he has this really nice upward trajectory through this period of moving from Lille, Nice, and then to Paris Saint-Germain. And we can see that really nicely on the board in front of me here. I've got Christophe Galtier season finishes throughout his time at Saint-Étienne, Lille, Nice, and then into the PSG era. Obviously, we wait to see where he will continue his season finishes then. But as, he, as we said, 09-10, that's when he's brought in to save Saint-Étienne from relegation after Alain Perrin is gone. And you can see then you have this really nice upward curve to a fourth place finish in 13-14. Drops off a little bit, but then he moves into uh, the job at Lille. And again, we have another 17th place here, avoiding relegation. And then this amazing uh, performances, series of performances for Lille. So second place finish, a fourth place finish. And then in 2021, that, that Ligue 1 win. One season at Nice, he drops down to, to fifth then, uh, but obviously you can see that these are the sorts of performances that are getting football directors around the world kind of interested in Galtier, and obviously that brings him to the PSG job. But what's really interesting about Galtier is that in the last few seasons, he started to use this 4-4-2 formation that has become almost his trademark. Now the 4-4-2 formation is a sort of traditional formation that you don't see getting played too much. We do see a 4 triple 2 formation being played by teams who like to counter press, but this is very much not that. So let's just spend a little bit of time looking at the 2021 Lille team that was really the team that got Galtier on the map of French football. So the first thing to notice about this team in front of us is that it's just a really set 11. So of the 11 players, I think about 10 of them started most of the games. Uh, they're solid across the, the whole of the starting 11, but there was a little bit of flexibility in the central midfield spot. Sometimes we'd have Renato Sanchez there, sometimes we'd have Bubakari Samari, who's now at, um, at Leicester, um, and then there's a few other players who could play in that slot. But beyond that, most of the players would, were starting this team, so you got a real uh, consistency through this team. And if we look at the team in particular, the place to start off looking is these two centre-backs. So we've got Sven Botman, who has been in the news quite a bit recently with transfer rumours, and then Jose Font, who a lot of people will remember from his time in the Premier League. Now, Jose Font is quite old, he's in his late 30s, and Sven Botman is quite a slow player. So when Galtier came to structure this team, he realised that he couldn't really push his back line forward because these two centre-backs wouldn't be able to play a high line. And so what he did is he, he keeps his defence fairly consolidated and rather than pressing forward and making space, 
He engages what we call a mid block. Now a mid block is different from a high press. A high press is when you're pushing everyone forward and trying to disrupt the back line of the opposition defence. And then a low block is when you get everyone sitting really deep and just trying to compact space and just deny space completely. In a mid block, somewhere in between the two. So you can see here, the two centre forwards here, uh, Burak Yilmaz and Jonathan David, rather than pushing forward, they, they like to sit sort of just around the, the centre circle. They're not going to put these two centre backs under pressure when they have the ball. Uh, and what they're going to do is they're just going to invite the opposition team to come towards them. Now, out of possession, we're going to see Lille drop into this sort of hexagon shape in their front six. So you can see here that, that nice hexagon shape. And what's going to happen is they're going to move one side to the other to, to press when the ball gets into more advanced areas. And the general idea is that you're going to invite the opposition to play the ball into these sorts of areas here and then you're going to use the touch line as another defender as people say and you're going to start a pressing trap close around the ball and try and win it back but you're not going to push high you're going to wait for the opposition to come to you in order to do that so let's say that this ball is played in here and we see this fullback here just pushing long might play the ball in to the uh, wide player here and then we'll see this hexagon shape just pull across close down space, close down passing lanes. And the general idea then is this midfielder may win the ball back and you can then start a counter attack. Now there's lots of space for you to attack. And so uh, Benjamin Andre would probably pass the ball to Renato Sanchez because Renato Sanchez is a good ball carrier. And then you would see Renato Sanchez dribble with the ball, carry the ball forward into this sort of area. And at this point, all of the other Lille players are going to be trying to get into advanced areas. Now, once Sanchez has got into this sort of area, we're going to see him look for these passes into wide areas to the two Jonathan Zicconi and Bamba and they in turn are going to try and find these passes into the middle so the centre forwards can attack the ball and hopefully score a goal. So this is very consolidated football, very conservative football, waiting for the opponents to come to you when you win the ball back then breaking at speed. Now when Galtier goes to Nice he has a different set of centre backs, he has Jean-Claire Tadibo, he has Dante as well, now Dante is a little bit older but Jean-Claire Tadibo is a quicker centre back as well but actually Galtier continues to use this sort of system with Nice as well and the interesting thing about this system is that it's a quite a defensive system, it's quite a conservative system, it's quite a passive system and the question is Will that style of play fit in at PSG? PSG obviously are an elite football team, really elite ball players, and it seems unlikely that they may be able to fit into this sort of 4-4-2 system, which is going to absorb pressure and then break at speed. So let's take a little bit of time to look at PSG team and see how a 4-4-2 might work. So here's how I think that PSG could possibly look like playing in a 4-4-2, and there are a few issues here and there. So I've set up this 4-4-2 as I expect Gaultier to play it. There are some benefits here. So we've got Mbappe and Messi here in the centre forward slots. And the big question that we've always had with, with Messi, particularly in a PSG team, is how do you get him doing the requisite defensive work? And Pochettino, who's the previous PSG manager, is a manager who likes a lot of off-ball work from his forwards. And, and Messi obviously getting older and not wanting to put as much effort in. Now, if you're playing a mid-block, your two centre forwards are just going to sit here. They don't have to do as much intense running as they might do under Pochettino. Now, where the problems do start occurring is in those wide areas because PSG simply do not have the requisite wide players to really play this system. Obviously, when they're playing in a mid-block, you've got a lot of defensive work from these two players in particular. And Neymar, as we know, is another player who has been questioned in terms of his off-ball work. And so already the idea of Neymar dropping in, helping out in these defensive blocks probably isn't going to work. And then beyond that, there is just not a depth behind either of these two players. Sarabia was away on loan. I think Sarabia is a good player, but again, you've got no depth behind him as well. The next area is obviously the centre midfield area. Now, when we looked at Lille, the big thing that we wanted from centre midfield is one, you want a ball winner who can get the ball back, and then you want a ball carrier who can move the ball forward into these more advanced areas and find those passes into wide areas. And this is the problem really with PSG. They don't really have any ball carriers. They tend to have players who are really good at passing, progressing the ball through passing. Uh, so that raises questions about the, the suitability of the 4-4-2 system as well. We do have other midfielders here. So you could play Idrissa Ghana Gay as a, as a holding player, although it seems as though he's probably going to leave. And we've got players like Paredes, Verratti, uh, Vitinha. These are all similar players. These are all really elite ball holders 
really elite passers as well, uh, but it just doesn't feel quite the same as the way that, that Lille would set up. And then you have your two fullbacks as well, uh, Hakimi and, and Mendes. These are both players who I think like really want to get forward uh, and, and help out in the attack, and that is not going to happen so much in, in, in a Galtier team as things stand. So the question is, are there any other alternative options? Can you set this team up in a different way that might be able to get the same sorts of ideas out of a Galtier team and, uh, and, and overcome some of the problems that we've seen in this situation? Now, Christophe Galtier has used other formations in the past and he has mentioned in the summer since joining PSG that the idea of a back three is one that could be used. Now, whenever Galtier has used a back three, he's tended to use a 3-4-3 formation. And so let's take a look at what that would look like. So you're obviously taking a player out of your forward line. Let's take Sarabia out and you're sticking them between the, the centre backs, you're making a back three. Obviously, Sarabia isn't going to play as a, a, a back three player here. So let's just stick Ramos in here for the moment. And then what you see is these players then shifting around. And the thing to note is that that hexagon that we talked about before, that hexagon shape has now become a pentagon shape. But the general principles are going to be the same. You're allowing space in these wide areas. You're going to push across, close down and, and try and um, win the ball back and break from, from this deeper area as well. Now we have even more problems because we've still got Neymar in that more defensive position here, but now we've pushed Messi into a more defensive position as well. So you'll often see this team dropping into this sort of shape with the, with the wingers here having to drop into, into these wider areas. Uh, and again, that sort of raises questions about the suitability of these two playing on the outside of the front three in the Galtier system. We also still have this midfield problem because there's still only two midfielders. And now we have a added problem in that we have to try and find three centre-backs from somewhere as well. Ramos barely played last season, he got injured quite a bit. Um, Marquinhos is obviously a, a really great player. Kimpembe is being linked with Chelsea, so maybe he's off. We do have uh, Tilo Keira and Abdou Diallo as well uh, as options, but you would think that if you're going to play a back three, that PSG are going to have to recruit some extra centre-backs as well. There's one final formation that I think could possibly work here, and I think that what we can do is we can try and make the most of all of the things that we have. So we have too many midfielders in a central space. We can see that we've got hundreds of central midfielders here and only two spots. We've got wide players who can't really play defensively. So we want to try and use a front two. And then we've got these fullbacks here, uh, these who can be played as wingbacks really successfully. So if we can get those into a fullback system, it would work. And so my quick suggestion is that maybe a 3-5-2 might work for Galtier because if we do that, we can play Mbappe and Messi in those, in those more uh, relaxed front two roles in terms of the defensive side of things. You can then push Hakimi and Mendes up into these sort of uh, wing back positions. We're gonna have to get rid of Neymar, I think, although we could potentially even play Neymar as a, as a number 10 here. Um, again, that sort of allows you three midfielders, so suddenly we can, we can start bringing some of these many, many midfielders into this sort of area uh, and then play your, your back three here. So I think that the 3-5-2 in this situation actually might be the best way for Christophe Galtier to go. So Christophe Galtier moving to PSG is going to raise some really interesting questions about what to expect. It's going to be a very different style of football to what we've seen at PSG. And also structurally, there's all kinds of problems that we've talked about in this video. So keep an eye on Ligue 1 next season because I think it might be a really fascinating league to see how Christophe Galtier brings his style of football to PSG, whether we see any changes or whether or not we see things going wrong because of these structural ideas. If you'd like to see sensible transfers for your team, then you are in luck because we've written sensible transfers articles for every team in the Premier League and published them on The Athletic. To read them, you can get a 30-day free trial for The Athletic by clicking the link in the description. Thanks for watching today's video.